Hi everyone, welcome back to another daily edit video and welcome to the brand edit. We're gonna be doing one of these every Saturday morning, so check back on Saturday if you want a full face of one brand of makeup reviewed just for you. I asked on Instagram stories what brand you would like to see. Like this was a little while ago. I was being a little bit sneaky. I hadn't even mentioned that we were doing the daily edit yet. I had so many responses and by far the most requested brand was Glossier by a country mile. I've taken the other three top brands as well and they are coming every Saturday for the rest of the month. But first things first, we, we just have to tackle Glossier. And you know what? I get it. I love Glossier. I'm very obsessed. I have done this video before and I'm pretty sure I also have done a video of dupes as well. I know so many of these products aren't available worldwide yet and we've, we've got a worldwide audience right here. So I will link those videos down below for you and also in the little i box in the corner, that corner. And hopefully there'll be some dupes in that video that all of you can get your hands on. And also before we start the full face, I have to say that the glossy wear line, glossy wear instead of glossier, I feel like I'm saying that wrong because it really doesn't work. But the pink glossier hoodie is an incredible hoodie. It really, really is. I have the gray one that they did as a limited edition piece of merch. And that one is good, but the pink one is next level. It, it's just absolutely fabulous. I can't remember what size I have mine in. I have a feeling it's a medium. I'll link it down below for you along with all of the products that I'm mentioning today. Um, but yeah, I love that pink hoodie. It's so soft, it's washed really well. I was gonna say I'm not really a merch kind of person, but I feel like that's a bit of a lie, but Glossier, whatever they come out with merch wise, I am here for it. And also the beauty bag is fab as well. And I think they currently sell this with some products in at a discount. A lot of these products can be purchased on their website at a discount if you buy them in like these little combo packs. So if there are a few things that you have your eye on, it's definitely worth investigating that. You might be able to save a bit of money, but I feel like I can spare you the Glossier spiel. You've heard it a million times before. It really has the no makeup makeup aesthetic nailed. I'd say they're pretty inclusive when it comes to shades and also their campaigns. The one thing I would say they're not very inclusive on is finish. Everything is very geared to this sheer, extremely low coverage finish, and that isn't gonna be for everyone. So things like a full coverage concealer, you're not gonna find here, and it doesn't really feel like that's the direction they're taking it in. The latest launch was a lip product, and I do have every single color here to swatch for you, so I'm gonna stop blabbing on and just start putting it on. Hopefully you can see things nice and clearly. All of these brand edit videos we're doing for you in natural daylight. There's a light, but it's on the plant behind me. Mark felt this looked too dark. And you know what? I agreed. Now let's kick it off with Glossier Future Dew, which I always call Halo Scope and is perhaps my favorite product from Glossier full stop. I will say that I haven't mentioned any of their skincare here. These brand edits are very much just on the makeup offering and not the skincare of any of these brands I'm going to mention. I like their skincare. I think most of it is a very fair price. The Milky Jelly Cleanser, for example, is great, but there's not a lot of it that I use time and time again and have repurchased. Aside from the Milky Jelly Cleanser and also the Bounce um, Serum, aside from that, I wouldn't say that anything is a huge standout for me, but this is a standout. This will never not be in my routine. It is the best, most hydrating, gloss giving, dewy finished primer. Like I said, they call it a skincare product and say that it's the last step of your skincare routine. But for me, the last step of my skincare routine is always SPF. So I would call this the first step of my makeup routine. It's a pearlescent, sort of oily, a little bit creamy, a little bit like a gel formula. It hasn't got any coverage though, and there's no pigment in it at all, but it just leaves the skin so glowy. Honestly, nothing else compares. I've just taken one pump there. It says on the back to take two pumps all over the face as the last step in your skin routine. I think two pumps is way too much. One pump for me is perfect. Although I do tend to use this kind of pre-mixed in with my foundation. I take a pump of this and a pump of my foundation onto a brush and tend to blend it all over instead of applying it as a product on its own. But I just, I kind of can't be without it. Whenever I test a foundation, I'm like, oh, this is a nice foundation, but it would be nicer with a drop of this in it. So I use it as a mixing medium, but also as this primer. And I just absolutely 
love it. If you were to buy one product from this video, the one thing that I would recommend, the one thing I would say that is completely undupable in the line, I don't know of another product like this, it's this product, it's the Future G. I had to look at it again because I was gonna say Halo Scope. If you know of a worldwide available dupe for this, please let us know because it is a fab, fab product. Next up, we have the Perfecting skin tints now this was one of the products that glossier first launched with i think i'm pretty sure they launched with this stretch and the generation g's or maybe it was this stretch and boy brow in my head it started the skin tint trend it is so low coverage it is so sheer think mac face and body and then take it down a notch. It's a bit of a love-hate product for people. It's very Marmite. You either use it and you love it and you think it makes you look nice and glowy and it kind of evens things out or you put it on and you think that has done absolutely nothing. Um, I love that they recently reintroduced a much wider shade range because um, before I think there was five shades and now I want to say there are 12. I'm personally a G11 in this and I'm also a G11 in stretch so I like to give it a good shake and then just take a couple of drops on my fingers and then just blend that out all over. <laughs> <laughs> and well, there you go, you can see that it's done pretty much nothing. I mean, I love a skin tint. I have had these in my routine over the years, and especially in the summer when you really want to do that no makeup makeup thing, having a really good skin day, it's great. But I do think for me these days, I'd prefer to go for something like the MAC Face and Body that just has a bit more coverage to it. It's a little bit more buildable. I mean, this is a lovely texture in that it completely sinks into the skin. You could get your face right up in a magnifying mirror and you wouldn't be able to see a thing. And that I love. I'll come close so you can see it. I feel like it does even things out, but I definitely took about 10 drops there and blended all over the face with fingers. It, it looks lovely and glowy and glossy, but I would personally reach for something like MAC Face and Body over this. So it's a nice product. If you have the most glorious skin in the world, you will probably absolutely adore this. But for me, it feels like a product that maybe at one point in my life I was a bit obsessed with, but now I pick something else. Let's talk about Glossier Stretch, a product that has been in my life ever since I was first able to get my hands on this. I have never been without it since. I absolutely love, 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 love this concealer. I love a pot concealer. I love a creamy inner pot concealer. This, the RMS concealer are my two favorite concealers. Yes, they are sheer to moderate coverage. I'd say this is more of a brightening coverage. It looks absolutely lush under the eyes. I mean, does it crease? Yes, because it is extremely emollient. So you are gonna get creasing with it. It definitely doesn't set down, but I just love that it doesn't look dry in my under eye area. And quite often concealers can make it look quite dry. Like the skin tint, they increase the shade range of this. So I think I'm now a G11, but I have three, <laughs> yes, three of the original light shade that I'm trying to work my way through. So that's what I'm gonna to use today, but the shades are very, very similar. I love this just on my finger. You can take quite a bit and then I warm it up and I just press it in. I've been using this product for years and I just absolutely love it. There's something about a concealer when you find the right tone, when you find the tone that works for you and it brightens, it has the right undertone that it cancels out any sort of purpliness. You, can't, you, you just stick with it, you know? I have enjoyed using the Zoeva 114 face focus brush with concealers like this and just taking a little bit more around the nose and then also onto my chin where I've been having a few baby boy related breakouts. Come a bit closer so you can see that blending in. But then again, this is the thing. It is so sheer, it's so light coverage. It's got that brightening finish. So it looks really, really nice around the nose, getting rid of any redness, like it's brightening under the eyes. But if you're someone who prefers more of a high coverage concealer, this is not gonna be the one for you. And also on blemishes, again, it's not really the one. I've got a sunspot here on the side of my face. It's it's not gonna do that much around there. Sorry, we're having a, we're having a lighting moment. A huge black cloud is outside. <laughs> if I zoom you in a little bit more, there you go. Hopefully you can 
see that sorry now we've got the studio like that was not the point <laughs> so for me stretch is a win i love it again like the future do i really had to think about that it'll be a product that will always be in my routine however i totally understand why it's not everyone's bag i do apologize the lighting is all over the shop there's an, it's now torrential rain it's now torrential rain but hopefully you can still see the makeup um on to bronzer glossier do not do a bronzer what is going on? I, I mean, is this summer the summer? I'm crossing my fingers. This is the summer that they bring out a bronzer. I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. I can imagine it will be creamy. I really hope they bring out a large range of shades. I think it'll be a matte cream. Maybe something like the Milk Makeup Baked Bronzer. I could see that being similar to what they would bring out, but I'm ready for it. I'm waiting. So I'm just going to throw on a bit of bronzer because I always wear bronzer and let's all just keep hoping that one day our prayers will be answered <laughs> let's go on to their cheek offering and the cloud paints these are their seamless cheek colors they're supposed to be a watercolor effect on the cheeks very natural it's a liquid formula that i wouldn't say it dries down to a powder but it does set on the skin it definitely doesn't feel glossy or move around or anything like that um for me you know me and blush although actually i am quite liking a bit more blush these days dusk is my favorite color of them all i feel like maybe last summer they bought out some new shades and there's actually quite a decent lineup these days so i just take well i was gonna say a small amount i've taken quite a lot there and i'm just gonna take that over the tops of my cheek and actually because dusk has a little bit of brown in it it can work sort of as a bit of a bronzer as well. I feel like Dusk does a nice job of being glowy. It's a peachy pink cream blush. It's a really nice product, but it just wouldn't be a product that I would always have in my kit and like wear every single day. But then I'm probably not the right target audience for it. One product that I absolutely love, I've been through a whole one of these, it's the Glossier Halo Scope in the shade Quartz. It's fabulous. I think they call it their glazed donut effect <laughs> highlighter and you've basically got a shimmer effect cream highlighter around the outside and then a little tiny bit of just like a clear sort of gel highlighter in the middle which means you get the best of both worlds um i don't like this applied directly to the skin it's actually quite thick and hard and i just don't feel like you can really blend it out well without blending out what is underneath it. So I like to put it in my fingers, again, warm up the product and press it into the skin. I mean, for me, Future Dew gives such glowiness that quite often when I'm using Future Dew, I don't worry about using a highlighter because it's more than enough glow on its own. And you could also use Future Dew as more of a targeted highlighter. So you might not necessarily find that you need both, but if you love a highlighter, I feel like Halo Scope is a solid option. Brows are obviously one of the things they are known for. They have the brow flick, I think it's called, which is the brow pen. And then they also have Boy Brow, which is their volumizing brow setting product. This again is one of their original products. I have the shade clear today. It has the teeny tiniest wand. I have to say, whenever I come back to Boy Brow, I do really like it because I feel like it doesn't clog up the brows and you don't end up with a weird dandruffy look in your eyebrows at all. I find I don't have to scrape off the product when it comes to the clear one. I do when it comes to the ones that have pigment in. So it's just a very easy brow product to use. However, I love the Hourglass Arch ones. I love the Refi brow products. So I would say this was almost one of the first to market, one of the originals. I feel like it has been replicated and improved on since then. So it, I, I like having it in my routine. It's been fun to rediscover it while testing out everything for this video, but I wouldn't say it's as much of a favorite as it once was. Now it took Glossier a while to bring out eyeshadow products. And the first product they came out with was the lid stars and the lid stars just don't do it for me they're way too shimmery there's like not a color that really sings to me they are not the one and then they brought out the sky washes and i thought yes this is it <laughs> these are matte products it's a liquid to cream eyeshadow formula just like the georgia armani one that i love this is brilliant but i will say they're not really my favorite they have quite a silicony 
texture to them. It makes them very easy to blend out, but I feel like they wash away on my eyelids quite easily. I wouldn't say they're the most long lasting. Yeah, and aside from this shade, which is called Terra, there's not really any other shades in the lineup that I absolutely adore. So I'm gonna use this today and I'll show you the color on my eyes, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite formula nor my favorite shade range. So I was so buzzing for Skywash, but it was a little bit of a miss for me. I mean, you put that color on and you're like, yes, but then you start to blend it out. Mark is making something for lunch and it smells amazing. I don't know, it feels a bit wishy-washy, a bit patchy. It's, it's not a patch on my Giorgio Armani eye tints. So I'll blend out the other eye, but I wouldn't say Skywash is a huge win for me. I've brought you close so I can talk about their mascara, which is Lash Slick. And again, this is a Marmite product. Some people tote this as their top mascara. They absolutely love it. My mum adores this mascara and she loves it. It's her everyday mascara. But for me, oh, I don't know. It's not a fave. It's not the Giorgio Armani Ice to Kill Wet Mascara. It's not the Lancome Monsieur Big waterproof mascara. It's water resistant. So it's a tubing mascara, I'm pretty sure, which means that it is water resistant, kind of shower resistant. It's not waterproof. And it means that it comes off easily with hot water instead of needing to use a eye makeup remover. Actually, the Glossier eye makeup remover is really, really good. I, I really, really like that product. That is a good one. The brush looks like so. It is a plastic wand with lots of tiny, tiny, tiny little grabbers on it. I feel like you can get a lot of precision out of this wand. And because it has so many tiny little grabbers, you really can grab every lash. They call it lash extensions in a tube. They say they want people to say, wow, your lashes look great today. Instead of saying, wow, your mascara looks great today. And it definitely gives off that vibe. It's not volumizing, but it does feel separating and lengthening. But for me, it just doesn't hold a curl. It's got the curl now. It looks great for about three minutes. <laughs> and then I feel like my lashes straighten out. So I feel that if you had a lash lift or if you had really lovely curled lashes like my damn sister, <laughs> this would be such a brilliant sort of everyday, yeah, it would actually look like lash extensions on you. But I just want a little bit more lift out of a product. Like I said, it looks good now but this will drop so there you go that is the finished look aside from lips skin love eyes not so much okay for lips i adore the generation g in cake i will say they reformulated and they did new packaging and now i'm not as much of a fan it's very waxy which i feel makes it quite hard to apply and also the color feels a lot more orangey terracotta whereas before it felt a little bit pinkier so i love the original generation g um i still have it in my collection but if all you can get your hands on is the new one it's still a very interesting formula it's a bit of a sheer balm lipstick with a matte pretty much shine free finish i like that so i've just taken that off because they have a new lip offering so generation g is very much their matte balmy sheer offering and now they have a new what, lipstick lip, lipstick lip balm hybrid i guess that is called ultra lip i was very excited by this it's been about a year since there's been an actual makeup release from Glossier and they very kindly sent me a mailer that has every single shade in. Um, I purchased Villa and Portrait myself and I had those for about a week before I had this. So I've had a play around with the formula but now I'm gonna have to play around with the colours. Oh, not a word. They look a little something like this. So they are in a pink tube where it's Generation G is exactly the same actually. Oh, they're exactly the same in a white tube. So easy to decipher if you have both in your collection. And this formula is basically Generation G, but with a bit more gloss to it, a bit more shine to it. I mentioned that they really reminded me of the Victoria Beckham lipsticks. And then I saw Lucy Moon do a review and she was like, no, they're not really like the Victoria Beckham lipsticks. They're a lot glossier. Glossier. <laughs> they're a lot glossier than the VB lipsticks. And I have to agree. Now I've like tried them, swatched them side by side. Yeah, they're definitely 
a glossier formula than that. But I was surprised by how much pigment they had in them. So I'm gonna zoom you in and I'm gonna take you through every single shade because I got them, so, so why not? Wow, we're close. So this is the shade Ember. This is the shade Fate. This is the shade Cache. This is what Villa looks like on the lips. So this is one of the colors that I had already. I really, really love it. One of my favorites. This is Lucite. I actually really like this one. I thought it would be too pale and milky on the lips, but it's a nice shade, especially with this makeup look. This is the shade Coupe, um, or Coupe. I love this shade, but this shade is just too glossy for me. Like I would much prefer the shade in a Generation G formula, something that felt a bit more matte. This is, oh, too bright, too glossy. This is what Vespa looks like on the lips. This is Portrait, um, so another one of the shades that I actually bought. Um, so a nice pinky, summery coral. And this is Trench on the lips, an interesting one. I saw Emily Wise wear this on her Instagram stories, and I was like, oh, wouldn't have purchased this. It feels like very brown on the website, um, but actually this almost feels a little bit like the Generation G in Cake. So this is Cake, and then this is the Ultra Lip in Trench. So actually, mm, Trench might be a fave. I kept Trench on. I really like that, and I like it with this look, actually. Um, but that is the finished final face full of glossier, how many F words? Hopefully this helped you out if you're not really sure what to buy. My top picks would obviously be the Future Jew. This is the top pick of all top picks. I also absolutely adore Stretch. I think it is such a glorious concealer formula. If you're looking for something that is slightly more sheer coverage and extremely brightening, something that never ever goes cakey, it's impossible to make it look cakey. Halo Scope is another solid product, something that I have used up all the way to the end and really, really recommend. Then like I mentioned, the eye products don't really do it for me. Lip products do it for me a little bit more. Really loving this Ultra Lip in Trench. Obviously a very new shade to me. I literally tried it on three minutes ago, but I do feel like this is something I could get a bit of wear out of. And you just know when they come out with a bronzer that I'm gonna love it. Like, please Glossier, give us the bronzer. We are ready. Everything that I've mentioned will be linked down below for you. I would love to hear what you think we have coming in the brand edit. What other three brands do you think were the top ones that you lot asked for. I would love, I would love to hear your thoughts. I basically have them all in this bag here. Oh, what's that? Tease. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow with another daily edit video. So I'll see you then, bye.